keep showing up and then one day it's going to turn around for you. And that's the thing. That's all I can say. The law of choice, in my opinion, is when you're in the ditch, when you're in the rope, when you're in the corners, whatever you want to call this analogy, you just keep going and trying to find a way. Yeah. Because you don't know where it's going to lead to and you don't know where it's going to work out. And you don't know how this is going to play out. And it might not play out exactly the way you think it's supposed to or whatever. But the thing is, is what's the alternative? This is Way of the Artist with Brandon Colby Cook and Evan Schulte. Identifying your blocks and demystifying your struggles so that you can claim your own path and make your life a work of art. It's another day at the office, Evan. Oh yes, and a hard day it is. Hard day. Really hate this job. <laughs> That's why I do it all the time. I mean, we just sit here and we talk and hang out and have beer. Horrible. Horrible. We've just lost like half of our audience. They're just like... <laughs> Start a podcast, people. It's, it's fun. Um, so today we're going to talk about the law of choice. And um, it's going to be pretty good, actually, because, uh, you know, the, the pre-talk that we had about all this stuff was actually, um, you know, I think that's been happening a lot recently where you, we kind of come into this and we go, okay, well, we're going to talk about this and that. And then we have this pre-discussion and it opens up such interesting things about this idea, you know, um, and the law of choice. I think the, the reason why this, this, uh, track that you're listening to is important is because the law of choice is directly related to power. Mm -hmm. And your ability to really not only do the things that you want in your life and have the things you want, but most importantly, be the kind of person you want to be in your life. Yes. Which is ultimately what will allow you to do and have the things that you want. Much like sitting here doing a podcast. <laughs> I mean, this came out of a law of choice. And yeah. sometimes choice uh, naturally unfolds and you don't necessarily know where you're going to end up. Like we didn't necessarily know we were going to get here. But at a certain point, we decided, you know, I just want to kind of lead people through how, how we got to this point where we get to hang out in an afternoon, have a beer together, have a conversation about this stuff, and then go off and do things that we love. I mean, this didn't just come out of nowhere. It came out of choice. Yeah. And I think for us, you know... Um, well, at some point you decided to take on acting. I decided to take on acting. We met uh, on a commercial. We ended up being in the same acting class. We're in the same acting class. We started getting talking about writing a script. We write a script. That works out pretty well. We decide to write another script. Um, we go down this journey of acting and writing and filmmaking and all this stuff. Um, some interest gets uh, in one of the scripts we have. We get back together. We start looking at how we're going to rework it. Um, some time has passed in our journeys. We start having conversations that are really great. And then the idea comes up about, hey, like, why don't we record this? And we choose to do that. Turns into a podcast. And these things happen. This is how this happens, right? So, you know, just uh, I kind of want to start out by saying like the law of choices is very natural. It's very simple. But you're making them as you go along. And if you continue to make choices of authenticity and integrity out of principle, you don't necessarily know where you're going to get or where they're going to lead or what's going to happen, but they allow you to become more of the kind of person you want to become. And then your life kind of naturally unfolds in this very interesting way. Mm -hmm. And that's what's led us here to this moment where I'm an asshole talking about being on a podcast, <laughs> but I want everybody to kind of like, kind of think about that. The choices we make good or bad have led us to the moment we're in. And so I think in this, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, are you choosing from a place of principle and integrity and values um, from a place of vision? Or are you choosing from maybe a place of fear or scarcity or peer pressure? Yeah. And how has that maybe affected your um, situation, your world, who you think you are? Mm -hmm. And then we want to hand you back the power of choice mm -hmm. so that you can go from wherever you are and begin to choose your life, choose who you're being, whatever. And, and it's all kind of, you know, this is all kind of unfolded. It's very cool. Yeah. And being, uh, you know, an artist is very much about making powerful, bold, integral choices. And, you know, as we're sort of laying the foundation 
some of the foundations for this. And one of the big things for me about choice is that we are constantly making choices. It's, it's one of those just processes of life. It does it, You can't escape making choices. Even not making a decision or not making a choice is a choice. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's, it's inescapable. So this is another, I think, reason why this is such a valuable thing for us to be talking about is because a lot of us avoid or I get a lot of anxiety about making decisions because I think that I, at least for myself, you know, one of the things that has given me over the years anxiety or stress about making choices is trying to make the right choice. And I think that a lot of people can relate to that. This whole thing is like, what's the right decision? What's the right thing to do? And that is sometimes not always a clear, a clear, sometimes it is. Sometimes the, the answer is, is obvious. Those are usually not decisions that we stress out about too much. But one, I, one of the things we talked about before this was kind of the gray area of making choices, Mm -hmm. which is where most of us run into challenges. So really what we're looking to address is how can we maybe relieve some of the anxiety? How can we make making decisions a little bit easier? How, what are some, some principles and some guidelines for making, I'm not going to say right decisions or the correct decision, but for making empowered decisions. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, this is, this is not, uh, where was I going with this? I don't know. It just, (laughs) it just suddenly just disappeared on me there as everybody waits on bated breath. Um, but you were saying something about, about choice there. (laughs) And, uh, I was saying something about choice. You were saying some things. I mean, that's what we've both been saying is we've both been saying things about choices. (laughs) I love it. Um, well, so, you know, choice, power, sorry, that's what choice, it was. Power. It was about power. How, how choice is power. Yeah. Choice is power. Um, and you know, I think like what happens is we don't always realize how much choice we have or the amount of choices we have. I think one of the initial issues, you know, one of the initial issues that people go through with, uh, with the battle of choice, you know, the law of choice, which is sometimes a battle is that they only see two options. They only see one way or the other way. But the law of choice is that there are an infinite number of options. Um, Not all are worth taking or even worth entertaining, but there's usually more that are worth entertaining than the ones that you are. So that's the first thing I'd like to kind of point out for people with Mm -hmm. the law of choice, that it's not always just black or white one way or the other. Sometimes there's a middle ground. And as you brought up in our pre-talk, compromise. Yeah. can be part of choice. Um, but you know, we'll get into compromise. We'll get into how that factors in. Um, but some uh, of these weird little corners of choice. Yeah, yeah. And, and then there's the approach to choice. It's, it's not just what you choose, but how you choose. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and at some point I'm going to share, I'm going to share a story, um, because story relates to choice as well, but we'll get into that in another talk, but I'm going to share a story for me about how choice, um, impacted my journey and allowed me to be here today and be where I am. Um, because I think sometimes people see, uh, maybe somebody who has done something that they want to do and they go, Oh, well, it was easy for you. Cause of blah, 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 or you, you know, you know, or whatever. And it's like, well, I think if you, if you, if you want to bring in the argument of easy, then you've already lost at the game of choice because you know, what looks easy to one person is difficult to another. And also you usually have no idea about the whole picture. And I think that, um, you know, I think the thing is, is that we got to quit excusing ourselves from just taking ownership and making the choices that we know are important in our lives. And I think that comes down to, you know, like you said, who do you want to be? And who are you? What kind of person are you? You know, and, and, and that comes from being present, comes from being having a vision, comes from having like a good idea of what you stand for, your integrity, your values. And I think if you want to actualize the law of choice in your life, first you have to look at you before you can even really 
get this, this law down to help you. Because if you're just kind of going like, you know, maybe you make decisions easily and you like, don't think about it. I don't really care. It doesn't really matter to me. That's, it doesn't mean you're good at this law Mm -hmm. because you might make decisions. You might continue to move. You might get results, but you might also cause a lot of damages too. And the thing of the law of choice is that, you know, usually when you build one value, you often cause a damage somewhere else. It's just part of the law. It's like a decision, um, usually, uh, kills one thing. It usually takes one thing and, and, uh, kind of destroys it. And that's okay though. You know, you, you need to look at when you make a choice, what are the things that are more important than the things that might, you know, cause damage. Right? Yeah. Cause I think a lot of people don't choose cause they're like, well, I don't want to hurt this. I don't want to do that. What if I choose wrong? Yeah. It's, yeah. and I mean, yeah. And that's one of the things there's, there's the consequence, right? All of our choices have consequences, both positive and negative. And, and we don't always, we can't always predict what those things are going to be. Only we can only accept that there will be consequences for it. And I think that there's a reason for that. The, the reason why, as you said, yeah, like it, a certain choice kind of kills off another thing, or at least for a time being, it, 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 there's kind of a, a weird sort of destructive element to making a choice. And that's an important part of it because we need to have consequences because it makes us be responsible. It makes us be thoughtful in our choices because if we're not thoughtful in our choices, like you said, there's, we, the, the capacity, the, the destructive capacity of our choices greatly increases. Mm-hmm. So, um, this is an interesting Avenue. I didn't think that we were <laughs> going to dive into, but Hey, here it is. Well, this is when, up. you know, this is when it ends up happening. You kind of like go down this road and, and then these things naturally come up. You don't, you don't even foresee them. But, you know, here you are, right? I mean, I think one of the big things, we were talking about this and was we went through the law of choice. We're like, and we went through the, yeah, like make choices from a place of value and principle and, you know, all of this. We went through the whole thing and it's like, well, yeah, obviously. Okay, great. So if it was that easy, you could just tell people that and then move on. But obviously the law of choice is a law that we brought up because choice and decisions are not easy all the time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're really difficult and sometimes... They're big decisions and sometimes they're smaller decisions, but they all play a part in the whole, in the whole gamut of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. I'll share my story. Yeah. So, um, I'll just jump right into it. When I was 21, um, you know, I, it's when I met you, I think I was 21. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had booked that commercial. I just got my first role on a mini series as an actor. Uh, I just got a um, short film distributed and I just um, got a short film or a film script, I mean, uh, financed. So, and, and it was going down to a festival and it was, it was produced. So I was doing all right. And I had, uh, I was in UBC. I was in the highest, uh, you know, best school pretty much in the province. And I had a TV show that I was doing at the time and they gave me an office and we were going to do a six part series and all of this. So I was kind of at this exciting point in my career. Um, and I decided I was going to go down to LA and do it up, see what it was like. And, um, my dad calls me the day I'm about to leave. And he says, I think you're wasting your life with film. And he threatened to disown me. He's like, you know, if you do this, this is whatever I'm going to do. And I, and I got pissed off. It's so pissed off because, you know, not only did he not believe in me, but he was threatening me right with this. And I said, fuck you. You haven't been there for most of my life. I don't need you now. Hang up the phone. I don't talk to him for three years. And I go off and I produce my show, you know, Soldiers of the Apocalypse, raised a hundred grand for that, brought in like 120 plus people to come be a part of that with me, did some pretty cool things. Um, he missed most of that, almost all of it. And so, you know, I look at that. Well, that's that choice, right? That phone call. I'm about to leave to LA and my father says, you know, I, th- I think you're wasting your life and, you know, I'm going to disown you. Um, well, I have a choice to make. And in some ways, it was an easy choice, but in some ways, it's a hard choice. Mm-hmm. What makes it a hard choice is that I love my dad 
And I always wanted him to be proud of me and, and love me and support me. And in this moment, that's dying. That's not happening. Um, the other side of it is I have this dream, this, this vision, this life that I'm pursuing and I want to go after and give a real shot at doing. Um, and he's threatening that. And he's saying, don't do this. If you do this, you lose this. Right. And so I'm there in that moment. And I, I look at it this way. I go, well, if he, if I give into him right now, then he'll always, I'll always be owned by this. And so for me, it was simple in the sense that it's like, no, my dream comes first. What's important to me. And I didn't want to be the kind of person that was going to be dictated by that. And this changed my entire trajectory. I mean, I look at the alternative of that choice and I think what a horrible outcome that would have led. So these choices are difficult. I wouldn't wish that upon anybody, but that was a choice I had to make in my life. And we have choices like this all the time. You know, we have choices where, you know, maybe you have a, 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 a partner, a girlfriend, boyfriend, uh, they say, I'll leave you. You have a parent doesn't believe in you. You have someone threatening something over you. These are the moments where you, you got to bring in the law of choice and you got to decide who am I going to be and how am I going to live my life? Because you could be controlled by the outside world, or you can be controlled by your internal locus of control. And I think this is the really important thing about the law of choice is that, you know, you either have an external locus of control or an internal locus of control. And you have power if it's an internal locus of control, where you decide how your life's going to go. And you don't let other things dictate that. Whereas the external locus of control is you let the world decide for you and then you take whatever you get, which unfortunately I believe a lot of people do. Yeah. And Mm. that's when you start to get that feeling of just being kind of blown around. Yeah. Like just like you're at the whim of, of the world. And I mean, this is really like one of the important things to establish with, with what, how choice brings, because you, you could probably argue that choice is is the ultimate power that we that we all possess. No matter what situation, you can read extraordinary real life stories of people who are in the worst of situations. And one of the things that consistently comes up is that even in these situations, there is always a choice. Even when things are just as as dark as you can imagine, where external circumstances have imposed themselves on you in an extreme manner, and there's still choice, there's still decisions, there's still choices to be made for integrity, mm. for dignity, for how you're going to live your life. For for some of these stories, like in uh, Victor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning, it was uh, it, it was the choice to face death with dignity Mm. to, to greet death with your, with your, with your head held high. Even when the people around you were, were trying to demean you at every single corner. Like that is an extraordinary power. That's extraordinary power to possess. Mm. And we all have access to that. We have all have access to that, to that level of, of, of empowered decision. And the, I think that the more we get on board with this now, I mean, this is one of the, the big flip sides, the, or the, the, something that comes out of claiming our power of choice, which is claiming our power of choice ends victimization. Mm Mm-hmm. When because we, when we don't, we are the victim. When we don't, we are the victim. We're just like, oh, well, I couldn't, I can't. Things should be this. Things should be that. These are, this is kind of the language of, of, of victimization of us saying like, well, I, I don't have a choice. What choice do I have? You know, and it's, and it's really weak. It's a very weak thing to do. And it puts us in a really, really bad headspace, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and for good reason, because we're not in control of, of anything. And I mean, I'm not, and I'm a person who says like, no, I don't think we control very much. We don't control our external circumstances or what 
other people are going to do. We don't control the families that we were born into, the environments that we were born into, but we always have choice about how we are going to respond Mm -hmm. to everything that comes at us. How are, how do you, are you going to respond? How am I going to respond to this? That's the only thing we ever have control of, but it's incredible. It's in, an incredible kind of control. It's an incredible kind of power as we've been talking about. Yeah. It's like, how are you going to be? And, and how, who are you going to be? You know, is really like where, yeah. where power is. I mean, I think the thing is, is people get confused because they think power is in like, what can I you know, what can I make others do or what can I make happen in the external world? And, you know, there's a certain part of that, which is pretty cool when we make something actually happen in the external Mm -hmm. world. But the thing is, is that I think where we get confused is we think that it's the thing we did as opposed to the person we were being. Mm. And this is a big difference because who you're being is actually much like a thousand times, maybe infinitely times more powerful than what you do. And think about it this way. If you are somebody who takes action, if you are somebody who is of integrity, if you are somebody who is passionate, right? How many little tiny intricate little acts of passion and integrity and action did you take versus I took action and did this thing? That's one action. But a person of action, a person of integrity, a person who's being a certain way, they're doing this stuff almost subconsciously, unconsciously, they're taking action, they're in integrity, they're doing this. So, you know, the law of choice comes back a lot to like, the character of who you are and where you're being and how you're doing, you know, your life. And I think that this, this is the, the key to how, how do we make decisions? How do we make powerful decisions in situations that are seemingly very complex or in a gray area, they're very, they're, that are, are challenging for us. Because when the decision is clear, there's not much stress. We don't need to think about, you know, we're, we've, all of us today, you and I, and everyone who's listening to this, you've already made, I don't even know how many decisions you've made today. You've decided what clothes you want to wear. You've decided, you know, what time you got up out of bed, you decided, you know, what you ate, what you drank. Like these are things that we kind of, we can just kind of go autopilot on a lot of these things and we don't, we just do them Mm -hmm. more so. Right. And, but to some of the, the bigger things that we have going on of, of, you know, life pursuits and, you know, the directions that we want to take in our lives, these, need, you know, and necessarily they require more thought, you know, to, to go into it. So how do we navigate these questions? How do we, how do we navigate these choices and have some level of confidence Mm -hmm. (laughs) in our decision? Because again, to me, it's like this, the, the idea of saying like, well, what's the right decision? It's like this, this, it's not, to me, that's what's the right decision is not the right way of looking at it, mm-hmm. right? It's like, what is the, the powerful decision? What is the more, more confident decision? And as we've been discussing, it really comes down to uh, who is the person that you want to be? Mm-hmm. And that question with it brings along uh, all of these uh, I- ideas and, and our virtues. It kind of stimulates all of what is kind of the best in us to go. It's like, well, who is the person you want to be in this decision? Mm -hmm. Is the person that it would, the person that you want to be make this choice or is the person you want to be, would they make this choice? And usually whenever I've had the, the mind (laughs) remember to actually ask that question, whenever I'm facing a decision like that, it makes it typically makes the decision very, very clear. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the other thing too is, you know, wherever you are in your life, where anybody is, you have a certain idea of, you know, you believe you are a certain person. Like you think you're a certain kind of like character. Like if you were to think of a movie, right? 
wherever you are in your life, your life is played out. There's kind of a movie to your life and you are the character in this story. And, you know, how you cast yourself and the story you're telling around this narrative you're telling around this character that you're being is your reality. But here's the beautiful thing. You're making all that up. You're making up the character and you're making up the narrative. Once you recognize that and you start to choose the narrative and choose the character, the whole game changes for you. But most people, they believe they are who they are and they believe their story is what it is. And they don't really do anything to change their story or their character. And they try to make choices from basically a character they don't want to be in a story narrative they don't want to be living in. And these people, um, you know, they kind of uh, find a little success maybe here or there and, and some failure here or there. And what happens is they play small because they have to play small because they are at the whim of their narrative and the whim of their own character identity. Whereas if you have an internal locus of control and you see that you can be whoever you want, whatever you bring out from within can become who you're being and living based on choices and decision and action and whatnot, then first of all, you start to see, well, hey, I don't have to be this character in this story. And then what ends up happening is you start to realize you can change the story. And let me explain how you can change the story because a lot of people don't get this part. They get the character part. They go, okay, I see, I see, I could be different. I could start choosing from a, from a core place, but they don't get the narrative. So the narrative is this, who are you casting in your movie? Who and how are you casting people? And what is the story and what are you making things mean? And what are you focusing on or not focusing on? What are you filtering and framing into your story that shouldn't be filtered and framed in? Where are you looking? Where are you putting your attention, right? Your story is where you put your attention. So look at, let's go back to my story. I'm a 21 year old kid. I'm about to drive down to LA. I have this um, thriving film career. And my dad says, I'm going to disown you if you leave you're wasting your life. You know what? I decide you're cut from my movie. Sorry, dad. I don't care if you're my dad. Nobody stands in the way of this character's journey. Nobody stands in the way. Nobody except me. And I'm not standing in my way. So you're either on board or you're not on board. And that's a decision in action. That's a, this is my narrative. You're not running my narrative. I'm running this narrative. Yeah. Right now, did I handle it the best? No, I was 21 years old. I did the best I could. Might have been an ugly way to make the decision. <laughs> Fuck you, hang up the phone. But you know what? He could have called me back. He didn't. It took him three and a half years to call me back. That's his issue. This is my journey. That's your journey. Now, I'm not saying, you know, and the other people on the other side of the chart, dad's an asshole. Well, no, he's not an asshole. It's not, I don't look at it that way. That's also poor casting. Do I need to create an antagonist in my life? No, he's just a guy who is his father of a son and was scared for his son because he thought, you know, well, what if my son goes off and does this film thing and ends up a disappointment later in life or whatever, or he has to feel the heartbreak of film industry or whatever. And maybe he was trying to protect me from that. Maybe his intentions were good. But the problem was, is that his way, his method was ugly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the thing. Your narrative you're either a victim or you're a champion of your story. So, you know, you look at this, you've got to make the decision, but at the same time, you know, you don't want to go around bitching and moaning going like, Oh my, you know, it didn't work out for me because my dad never believed in me. It's like, "Eh, what, what's the other side? If I listened to him and I didn't drive to LA that day, Oh, you know, I could have had a career in the film industry, but you know, blah, blah, like, but you know, my dad was going to disown me. So I never drove to LA and now I don't know. And yeah, like, here's the thing you're making all this up you're telling everybody and you're telling yourself how this is working. So, you know, and I'm not saying this is always easy, you know, but I didn't understand some of this stuff when I was younger. But uh, the one thing I can say, the first place that anybody's in, this is the first thing, is you have to begin to figure out who you are going to be and you need to make choices from that place. They may be ugly and you may end up saying fuck you to somebody and hanging out the phone on them. And I'm not saying it's the best way to do things. Yeah. But that might be what it takes in the beginning. Yeah, because, you know, usually, especially in something in a situation like that, you know, first, there's the choice of, okay, well, where do you, where are you going to stand on this, right? 
And then once you made that decision, it's like, okay, so now that you made that decision, now how are you going to communicate that? Yes. That's another, that's another choice. <laughs> that's another choice. I mean, yeah. like, I, I remember like in, like when I was in high school, I got, I got picked on. I was bullied by people who were like my friend circle, you know, like, I, and I'm sure there's probably lots of people who've been in that situation before. Cause I was a bit, I was a late bloomer. I didn't kind of like shoot up until like later on. So I was the smallest person in like my crew of people. And so I got picked on because of it. Right. And, uh, so at a point I made a decision that like, Hey, I'm not hanging around these assholes anymore. That was a, that was both again, an easy and a hard decision to make. But you know, then years later, I'm still in high school. I mean, like my senior year and I've grown up now. I'm now kind of, you know, <laughs> like a good size adult, <laughs> adult, adultish man, boy, whatever yeah. you want to <laughs> call that. And, uh, and I got into a situation where a teacher was picking on me. Mm. A teacher had come up and was trying to bully me for you know, what, are, what the reasons were, were like, that's a, that's a kind of a side issue, but it was, it was a situation where it's just like, I had, I had walked away from that situation in my life at one point where I said, I'm not going to put up with people who treat me like shit and think that they can push me around. Mm. I'm not going to deal with it. And at that time, you know, like when I first walked away from that, you know, I was kind of a small person. So it's like the best solution for me and the best way to handle it is like, you know what, I'm just not going to associate with these people anymore. I'm just gonna start hanging out with new people. Right. Problem solved. Now I was in a situation where now I'm bigger. I was bigger than this teacher actually. Oh, really? <laughs> and this teacher, and then he, and, and he was like every single day he was, he was, he was coming up to me and, and, and giving me shit about, you know, like about basically like what I had on, like on my locker kind of thing, okay. which was really pretty, pretty small potatoes. Um, but there was nobody else that he was like singling out for this. Like he was singling me out in particular for this, for this thing. Mm. And so I'm like, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put up with it. And I would just go, okay, all right. You know, like, and I would just, I would just nod and whatever, cause he's a teacher. And then I just wouldn't do what he asked me to do. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously it, that was another decision. So it escalates to a point where he walks right up into me and he's poking his finger in my chest Jeez. being like, do you want to take this up with the administration? And there was like, I'm got like, I'm seeing red, right? Cause for one, I'm so just like done with having this conversation with this teacher. Yeah. And, but now he's actually like physically touching me and getting into my, into my physical space. And there's a huge part of me that's just like, wants to just like shove him <laughs> against the other side of the wall. But I'm making the decision, <laughs> the choice that that's probably not a a good call. Right. I'm not going to back down from this, but I'm also not going to put myself in a situation where I can be easily expendable mm. and easily dismissed. Yeah. Right. So my response was just like, I would love to take this up with the administration. Like, let's do it. Like, I'm going to call your bluff. Yeah. Like, let's, yeah, let's, yeah, call let's, the bluff. let's do this, man. Seriously. Like, let's, let's bring this to some other people and right. bring some other opinions into this. So there's, this is like a, another case of, of, you know, upholding a value. A part of me said like, no, I'm not going to let people walk all over me yeah. anymore. That's just, that's just does not fit the bill. So what happens when somebody does that now? Am I going to, you know, there's, there's all of these choices of now, how do I handle that, that scenario, mm -hmm. but still upholding a value? Well, you know, I think the thing is, is like, you know, we're talking about the various ways in which you can kind of stay in your power with choice. And, you know, one of the, you know, one, one way to deal with it is in some cases, we just walk away from that person right? Yeah. We just cut them from our life. We say, no, not interested. That group, that, that, that company, that boss, that relationship, friendship, whatever. Um, or that behavior. Yes. That or that behavior. Have, you know, sure. 
And so, I mean, in some, sometimes, you know, that's the, the easy and the simplest way to get things done. But sometimes you can't just cut someone out of your life. You're not able to do that. Um, you know, and I think where, you know, choice comes in and people have a difficult time standing up for themselves. But, you know, I think, you know, part of it, like I listen to your story, you go, well, you were sick, you were sick and tired of it. You're fed up. You'd had enough. You know, that's, that's often, usually when we stand up for ourselves a lot of the time. Um, what I've learned is, you know, have a lower, lower threshold, threshold for pain tolerance when it comes to social interaction. See, I think it's good to have a high pain tolerance for say physical pain, you know, where you work out and you can push past the pain and you push, you're playing sports, stuff like that. But when it comes to social interactions, have a lower tolerance of pain. People take too much shit. They don't speak up soon enough. They don't say stuff soon enough, say anything soon enough. And so like, you know, you, you called the bluff, you go, okay, well, if someone threatens you, I think a lot of the time, the best move is to just, you know, to either, if you can call their bluff, whatever their thing is, or turn it back on them. It's such a great little thing to do because if you look at it, you can always go, um, if anyone's ever threatening you, they're usually in a weak position. So that's why you can either call their bluff, leave them. Or the other thing you can do is you can turn the very thing that they're doing against them. So, um, how would you do this? You know, uh, a decision could be like, for example, you got someone, they're really angry at you, right? They're like, ah, oh, you did this, blah, blah, blah. Instead of talking about what they're talking about, go, yeah, you seem like you're really angry. Just make it about their anger because the anger is the issue, right? Or you seem like you're being very aggressive to me right now. You're being very aggressive to me right now. You're, you're poking me in the chest. You say that to them and they have to identify their behavior, right? Mm-hmm. So you make them identify their behavior. I'm, I'm kind of taking this a little bit away, but I want to give people a tool that I've learned in my life because I had a tough time standing up to, for myself mm-hmm. when I was younger. And my best method was usually just cut people out of my life. It wasn't until later where I learned to just call people out on the very action they're doing. Um, I'll share another story. It's interesting, actually, because it kind of just spur- spurred into this, but... I got a speeding ticket, right? And uh, it was my third speeding ticket. And I had in Vancouver, you have a new driver's license. So you get three speeding tickets, you get your license yanked for like six months. And I got my third ticket while I had my new drivers. But it was a bullshit ticket, like total bullshit, total Mm. like, you know, and it was like, and I had just, and I disputed it. And I went and got my full license. So now that I had my full license, it doesn't really matter. You just pay the points or whatever, if you're guilty. But I'm like, I'm not guilty for this ticket. This is bullshit. So I'm going to dispute it. I go to the legal, like the court and, um, we're there and, uh, I'm hoping the officer just won't even show up. Then I don't even have to deal with this crap because you know, <laughs> anyway, he does. And there's a whole courtroom of people all for the same place that he got them. Right. Cause yeah. it's just a speed trap. And, uh, you know, one person after the other, there is like, you know, you were speeding, you're speeding, everybody's, you know, whatever. And his argument on everybody is like, well, is it, um, is going 51 kilometers an hour speeding if the limit is 50 and everybody has to say yes, because, you know, some people are trying to blatantly lie that they weren't speeding or blatantly lie about things and they're getting busted. And I'm just like, well, I'm not lying. And I, I was going over, so this whole argument about being 51 or 55 over yeah. is like, whatever. So we have a courtroom break. I go out and I'm like, okay, well, I'm thinking about it. And I'm just like, well, what's the problem here? Speeding is not about speeding. Speeding is about safety. We don't speed because it's safe. We want to make sure everybody's okay. We want to avoid accidents. We want to avoid losing control of our vehicles. We have speeding limits because we keep control. So I went back in the courtroom and they let you ask the officer back some questions. And I said to, I, and they let you say a statement. So I said my statement. I said to the court, I said to the, uh, the judge and the court and I said, and the officer, I said, look, I'm not here to dispute that I was speeding. I was speeding. I've also sped in the past, but I was younger then and I've learned since. And in this case, um, I want to explain that I believe I was driving safely. 
but I was going over the speed limit. And so they say, okay, great. And then they let me ask him a couple questions. And I said to him, is it, is it better for someone to speed and avoid an accident? Or is it better for them to take an accident and avoid speeding? It puts him in a double bind dilemma where he has to accept that this is about safety, right? So I created a question. I posed it back at him and he has to say that it's better to avoid the accident than to speed because if he doesn't, like he's a bad cop. He's not good. Yeah. So basically he's in a situation where he has to say it's okay to speed if you're avoiding an accident. And I made a case about how like where things were kind of like where the um, intersections were kind of coming in or there's a merge, two merge lanes on the same highway. I said, well, it's not really an easy place to be going. You have to kind of be looking over both shoulders to make sure you don't, you know, collide. And I felt I was going at a safe speed. So basically he had to say, bring this back, that it's better to avoid an accident, it's okay to speed to avoid an accident. Because if you have to, that's better. And so that totally erases the entire argument that he had, that you're going over 50. So my point of this whole thing is that I had a choice. I look at this and I go, what is this about? So whenever anybody's attacking you or wherever you're in a place where someone's threatening you, the best thing you can do is make it about the thing, not about the attack, not about the thing. Like, like really, if I look back at that conversation with my dad, what I should have said to him, well, not should have, I would now, if this was ever to happen to me again, I'd say, wow, it really seems to upset you that I'm going to LA. I wouldn't even make it about whether I'm going or not. I'm like, first of all, let's figure out why you're so upset about it. Because you know what? You mm-hmm. think I'm wasting my life. Wow, it really seems like w- what's going on for you to, to feel that way, right? Yeah. And you make it about them and their fears, And that's what, in some ways, that's what you did when you called the bluff. You made it about him. Now he has to confront the fact that like, he's doing the thing, but like even further, you could say you're pointing in my chest. Yeah. Is that okay? Is that good? Is that good behavior? Like you make it about the thing they're doing. So like, I I just kind of like, I know people have difficult time with confrontation. I know I did. I just felt this was a good opportunity for us to kind of bring that up. Things are often not about what they seem to be about. Does that make sense? So mm-hmm. like speeding, uh, uh, parking ticket, fucking somebody trying to fight you, somebody threatening you. It's not really about that. And here's the other thing about choice. You have to remember this person's making choices and maybe yeah. from a very victim-y powerless place. So you need to find a figure mm-hmm. out, well, how do I position myself in a place of power? Yeah. Right. And it's about making, so like we've been talking a lot about making choices that especially involve somebody else who's an external influencer yes. of the situation. Very often, a lot of the, the choices that we have to make are ones that we just have to make for ourselves. Yeah. Whether to leave our job to pursue another one or whether we should move to another a new place, whether, we, you know, like a lot of these things. And, and I think most of the time we're coming up against our own internal kind of dilemmas, our own internal struggles, not necessarily ones that have been imposed upon us. Right. And it's, I think that these are, those are the choices that we make that are in many ways, the most important ones that we make. Yeah. The ones where we're alone, you know, okay. I want to say one thing yeah. for anybody who's wondering about the speeding. I didn't get the speeding ticket. Oh yeah. <laughs> so because basically they said, okay, well you proved that you, through argument, you proved that you were driving safe. But I wanted to point out that I made the argument about safety, not about speeding. Yeah. Okay. And, so, and so, yeah, this is what, where I wanted to, to bring it to is that this actually, so it's like, okay, that's, that's excellent. That's awesome. If I'm in a, in a situation of, of conflict with another person, right. Uh, but what about a situation when I'm not in conflict with another person? Well, this is still not that far off of, of, of how we can sort of talk to ourselves, how we can sort of think for ourselves, which is like, okay, well, what is this really about? What is the, like the, the cause of this, this dilemma or the stress or, you know, the, the difficulty in making a choice in this particular manner. And, and like you said, it's like making it about the actual thing, 
Well, yeah. And it's like, um, what we were about to get into, it's about principles and values, right? Cause it's like, we don't speed because the principle or the value is safety, not because we don't speed like, and like when somebody is angry and, and they're telling you something, are you okay with someone telling you something when they're angry? And the other thing too, is like, when you're making a choice in your life, are you doing it because you're scared? So my point is, is that mm-hmm. you you need to, you need to first, before you make the choice, you need to acknowledge the fact that you're scared. Do you want to be making choices from a scared place? Do you want people to be talking to you from an anger place? Do you want to be having the law held against you literally as like a rule, as opposed to the value that the law actually upholds, right? We need to look beyond um, the thing. And so I think when it comes to more personal, you know, like what you're bringing out is like, well, we're, you know, there's no one stopping me from making a choice here. It's like, there's no antagonist, no person, but it's like, first, if I'm scared, I need to deal with that before I can make a choice. Yeah. Because I need to confront and be aware that I'm scared or that I'm feeling peer pressure and I really just want to fit in with my friends. You need to deal with that before you can actually talk about what the real choice is. Because right now, your choice is being um, clouded by either fear or the judgment of others or some other bullshit, right? Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is like we need to, the law of choice is so much about separating the things and looking at them more like decisions become easy. That's why we said it's a hard decision, yet an easy decision. It's Mm -hmm. easy when you know the value. It's hard when you're letting like things like, well, then I'll have no friends. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, there is. It's like, sometimes there's like, um, you know, making, I'll, I'll say the word, but like making the right decision, um, when we know that it's the right decision is sometimes obviously it's the hard one. Very often we, we come up with like, well, it's, this is a hard decision, even though I know it's the right one. And the easy thing to do would be to make this other decision and to, you know, play it safe or whatever the situation might be. So in those, like, cause there's, yeah, there's so, there's such a gamut of different kinds of choices and that will be presented with making. Mm -hmm. And in those types of situations, it's like, yeah, there are, there are times when, when we come up against a choice where it's like, I know that this is the right call, but I so don't want to do this. Like I, so, and that's usually it's like, okay, so what is this now all about? What is this, you know, and we can go and examine that and say like, okay, so like, what's the fear around this? It's usually fear. It's almost always fear that prevents us from making the, you know, a good empowered decision, you know, because fear is the one that makes us make the easy choice that makes us take the, take the, the low road Mm -hmm. that makes us take, you know, be safe and comfortable and, you know, and numb. Mm -hmm. right? But this is way of the artist. So we don't take the path of numbness. (laughs) Well, I think it comes down to like, what do you, you know, you have to be, you know, if you believe you have something to lose, you, you, you know, you lose the power to make decisions, to make choice, Mm -hmm. right? Like, I think, I think there's two sides to this coin, right? Like my dad literally disowned me. Like he literally like, that was it. I mean, I had to figure out what I was going to do. You know what I mean? Like, um, at that point we had real estate together and, you know, and he just took that and he walked and, you know, it, I was, I was left in the lurch with like nothing. Um, you know, and I had to figure out what I was going to do. So that was a loss to me in certain ways. Uh, you know, and so I look at that, I go, well, you know, the, sometimes you're in a situation where you can actually have things that are of value and things that are important be taken away from you. But the thing is, is I think you have to look at your values of like, um, my, my value is this, I don't know. I learned this younger, but it was like, um, I saw money and material items as things that could be easily taken away, that could be lost, that, that, um, they were very temperament, temperamental. Whereas like things like, um, your relationship with yourself and your relationship with others was really like things that mattered because when I was 14, um, you know, we lived in a mansion and we literally lost everything. My parents had to both declare bankruptcy. Um, and 
you know, between 14 and 21, you know, my dad had worked back a lot, but I had helped him to work back a lot of his fortune. You know, I literally, um, that's why we were in this situation. So in many ways I was supporting him too. But, um, you know, I watched us literally lose our house, lose all our money and, and watch my family split up. And so I learned at a very young age that like, you know, all this shit, all this stuff, can all just disappear, disappear. But if you lose family, when people split up with each other, and if you know, if someone like I also lost my grandma, right, like at 17, you know, people, people pass away, they die, you know, you you start to realize, well, um, who am I going to be? Like, what's my life going to be, you know? And so for me, in some ways, um, giving up the, the, say the, the financial support or the things or the, the connections, to me was much more, important to live my life than that. And this is where values kind of comes in, but we need to make these decisions mm-hmm. because, um, the, these things don't have to be so scary when you know what you care about, when you know, what's important to you, mm-hmm. you know, like, I mean, parents have this, like when it's between them and their kid, like if it's their kid and something else, they usually have a clear value towards their yeah. kid. You know what I mean? Um, at least that's what they talk about, but like, why is that? Because you're clear, you're clear on that it becomes easy, but we're not clear on so many areas in our life. Mm-hmm. So that's why the law of choice fails us because how do you make a choice when you don't even know what you stand for? When you don't even know what matters to you, when you don't know, even know what's meaningful to you. Yeah. Yeah. This is why uh, I'm going to bring this, keep bringing this back to this, this question is like, who is the person you want to be? Mm-hmm. Because that will get you in touch with your values. Yes. Within your students, that'll start, that question will start to reveal what you value, you know, the kind of person that you want to be in the face of real situations and scenarios in your life. And then to act on it is what, you know, really, we we talked about this before is that choice is the power to define our lives. And it really is, we, we, we really kind of do become the, the decisions that we make and part of, and, and one of the things we brought up earlier was that like, even not making a choice is still a choice. And to just like impart this, this thing that it's like engage, like, you know, so much of, of what we talk about is just like engage, be conscious about this because this is happening whether you like it or not. Yes. You know, and when you willingly participate in life, (laughs) when you willingly participate in your life and, and we start to work with these things, that's why we talk about these laws. These are kind of laws that just are like, all right, this is a way to help you participate in life. And choice is one of these crucial ingredients in, in the whole thing. It's just like, start making choices because otherwise choices will be made for you. Totally. So start making choices in your life and you'll start to one choice after another, steer your life to some degree more in a direction that is in alignment with who you are and who you want to be. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and it's okay. We're going to like, everybody screws up. The, the, the greatest success stories are, are riddled with failures with, with people falling flat on their faces, you know, make a choice and say like, all right, this is the choice they're making and you go for it. And maybe it doesn't quite work out how you expected. Guess what? In that there's another opportunity for a new choice, Mm -hmm. except now you're a little bit wiser than you were before. Yes. Right. Like it, it, this is it choices and within all of the other laws that we've talked about, I mean, this is, uh, has huge implications for things like the law of process, you know, like choice integrates with process to a large degree with, uh, presence with experience, you know, choices is, is weaved right into all of these different facets of our, of our lives. But it's, it really is, um, it really is the the component that can give us great power. But uh, I was about to quote Spider-Man there. I'm not going to do it. Um, <laughs> With great power <laughs> comes, comes something, 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 yeah. right? Um, <laughs> but no, it's, it's, so it's really about being conscientious about 
making choices and that we are making conscious choices in in where we're going and and the type of people that that we want to be i think you know i think also like with um with choice you know comes down to like well why what's your why like why Mm -hmm. are you making this choice and why that right like um you know i think sometimes we you know we don't necessarily Um, we're not always choosing from a higher self type of place. We're choosing from like a lower self place where it's like, you know, trying to do something to like get something. I think like the, the, the more, the more of a better way to choose is just kind of like choose to experience yourself, choose to experience being and living and, and going down the road, which seems important and meaningful to you, as opposed to like trying to like make choices in the, in the exchange to like get something. Cause here's the thing you can enact the law of choice and it will give you a lot of power, but nothing is really going to ever give you control over the external world. Like yeah. you, no matter who, no matter what, I mean, like, you know, things can change. Like the economy can change. Like you could end up, your country could be war torn. All sorts of things could occur and they could literally botch all the the plans you had about how you wanted the world to work out. Now I'm not saying don't like plan for the future and have goals and try to make things happen, but don't make your actions and your being and your choices like entirely dependent on external things working out. Because if you do that, I think you'll fear failure and you'll Mm -hmm. fear making mistakes. But if you do things to be and learn, what ends up happening is you make a mistake and you go, Oh, I learned something. I'm better instead of like, Oh, I didn't get what I wanted, but you go and you make a choice and you learn something and you go, okay, I learned what did I learned. Now I'm better. Now I'm better equipped to handle it in the future. And if you're willing to get a lot of the mistakes out of the way, you'll be way better off. So the law of choice isn't about making the right choice in the sense that you make the right choices that get you what you want. It's about making choices that um, are right for you. And then you learn in the external world how they play out and you become Mm -hmm. better at navigating that and be better at being who you want to be because you learn. I mean, how good could you really be in life if you never make any mistakes? I mean, how (laughs) arrogant would you be? You know? Yeah. Your, 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 your mistakes, your errors, your, your, your flaws like that stuff's what makes you human, which gives yeah. you the ability to have compassion and empathy for others. Because, you know, I, and I think there's this, I think the thing around choice, and this is the kind of elephant in the room that no one's mentioned yet, which is this the whole thing about trying to be perfect. Mm-hmm. Choice is not about perfection. Choice is about authenticity. Mm-hmm. And one thing that we didn't even get into yet that we had talked about early, earlier was, 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 about humanity as well. Right. You know, like make, make, make choices out of our humanity as opposed to perfection or trying to be right. You know, that's a surefire way to add a whole new level of, of stress and anxiety onto the choices that you make, you know, like, because it doesn't leave room for their, for error. It doesn't leave room for something else to enter the equation that we didn't foresee. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's so rigid. And that's, that's it's how, how choice plays in with the law of presence as well, is that it's like, you know, we make our plans, we, you know, we talk about, you know, have, you have your vision, you have your why, you have your passion, your reason for doing your thing that drives you. And these, those components all f- you know, are the things that fuel our values and the choices that we will make, you know, because we want to make choices that steer us more towards what that, that passion, that purpose, that why that, um, that vision is, you know, that that seems pretty, pretty simple and straightforward. But then there's this whole component of it's like, okay, but we don't know there's the whole unknown component when we step out on that journey, step out onto that path. So then there's just the presence. It's like, it's, it's like, Oh, okay. Well that happened. I didn't think, didn't see that happening or wasn't prepared for this, but now there's a new choice. Yeah. And it's always a choice. It's like, okay, well, what's the best choice now based on what's happened that is still going to bring me towards 
this thing that I want to do yeah. or this person that I want to be. The, that, that choice is still always, always there no matter what happens. It's always there. Who's that person you want to be? Oh, fuck. Well, this happened. Doesn't matter. Who do you want to be? Okay, I'll, I'll do this. Great. Is that better? Oh, yeah, that's a little bit better. <laughs> great. I now think- what do you do? I'm going to do this. <laughs> All right. Great. Now we're getting some movement. Now we're getting some momentum, right? Totally. I think this is like a lot to do with like what we've kind of stumbled on here is where experience and vision meet, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, experience can be a great limiter sometimes in us, in our choices, because we use our past pains as reasons not to choose or be bold or be brave. Um, but experience can also serve us in that we're better equipped to understand. Now, when it comes to experience, my thought is this, if you have a victim mentality, if you are being a victim, experience hurts you because you just see more ways in which you can be a victim and get hurt. But if you see yourself as a champion, experiences serve you because you see that you ran into a roadblock, but then you stepped up and then went this way. And then when that next roadblock came, you stepped up and went this way. And when you stumbled, you figured out and you learned some, that's how a champion thinks. Now that's how experience works. So you can either use it to hurt you or use it to serve you. Same with vision. But vision is more about who am I going to be and how am I manifesting my life and what kind of world am I creating around me? You know, and vision can be used against you as well as much as it can be used for you. But champion experience with champion vision, best results, victim experience with victim vision, worst results, because you can envision all the horrible things. These are worriers. Mm -hmm. They're like, well, what if this happens? What if that happens? The champion says, well, if that happens, this is what I'll do. And if that happens, this is what I'll do. And if this happens, that's what I'll do. The champion just keeps going. Yeah, if this happens, this is what we'll do. But the victim goes, well, what if this happens? Roadblock done. Yeah. Right. So you got to decide, are you the kind of person that's roadblock done? Or are you the kind of person that goes, well, if this happens, this is what I'll do. And if this doesn't work out, I'll do this. Yeah. Like you always have a way. Yeah. It's like that thing. I'm just like, are you a, are you a problems person or are you a solutions (laughs) person? You know, that's kind of a crude way of, of, of exemplifying this sort of, but it is, it's, it's, it's the power of choice, you know, it's just like, are, are you going to choose to see nothing but problems or are you going to choose to search for solutions? In the face of problems, if they even arise, you know, like it's, and this is why I think it comes down. Like what I said earlier, though, it just comes down to who you're being, because if you're being a champion, then you look for opportunities. You look for ways, you look for solutions. If you're being a victim, you look for ways to excuse yourself. Yeah. And so it starts with how you diminish yourself. Yeah, exactly. And you know, and look, I've, I've gotten, there's been times in my life and still moments in my life, moments now, because yeah. <laughs> I don't entertain that shit yeah. like I used to. But, you know, there've been time. there's been times in my life where it was just like that. I've made that my world, you know, of, of, of being a worrier, of being limited, of making myself a victim. Not, I wasn't consciously doing it, you know, but I became aware that I was doing it, became aware that, you know, that, I was talking to myself using a, a kind of language and, and, and a perspective that was just not helpful mm. at all. And this is, this is the, the thing about this is it's like, you know, there, there's always, if you're in that state, there's like, yeah, but this, yeah, but that, yeah, but this. And it's like, yeah, there are a lot of problems. There's a lot of issues and things aren't always fair in this world. And I say, yeah, but you can still make better choices. You can still make more powerful choices. Mm -hmm. You can choose not to be a victim in all of this. You can choose to be, as you said, a champion. You can be a champion in the ditch, man. (laughs) Like it does, it doesn't matter that that option is always there. That's often when it's the most important when That's, you're in the ditch. Absolutely. Because it's easy to be a champion when you're flying high. Yeah. When things are working out and everything's going right, it's easy to be a champion. Yeah. But when like you're in the freaking trenches. Yeah. 
you against know, against the ropes in the corner, against the ropes in the corner, <laughs> like that's where it counts. Yeah, like that's, that's where, where it really counts to not to not put yourself into that position because there's really it. it here's let's make this story short. It goes nowhere. Yeah, that story goes absolutely nowhere. It's it's round and round and round and round we go. And you're the one who's hanging on on to that merry-go-round, and you can step off of it at any time that you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I think that I think when people are in the victim mentality, and I've done it before, and I've done it quite well, in fact. Yeah, but I've done it, and I've uh, done it quite well. You know, when I've been in the victim mentality, and when we do this, what we do is we get people to um, get we get sympathy, and we get people to basically. Um, validate our story of how we're a victim. And what we do is we get these people around us to kind of insulate us and help us to kind of stay small and make excuses and allow us to have our excuses validated. So it's like, you know, that person is like, oh, life's so tough for you. Too bad this happened, you know, too bad, you know, whatever. And it's like, yeah, it's too bad this happened for me. It's like, what What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. Some stuff happened. Get over it and move on. Like, look, like I, I've dealt with <laughs> not to be discompassionate no, but or I'm anything. Not. Listen, but... <laughs> I'm, this is what I'm about to say. Listen, I've gone through trauma, like trauma in my life. I was physically assaulted, you know, at a young age by an adult that I trusted that was very close to me. And that traumatized me. Okay. And I had a lot of work to deal with that. But the thing is, is that, you know, I'm not going to say like, you know, don't feel because I'm the first to say like, work out your feelings, but don't make your feelings an excuse. Don't make Mm -hmm. your feelings some justification of why you can't do or be what you want to do. Look, do it in spite of that. Look, I went and I raised a hundred grand to make my show and that's nothing compared to what I can do now. But I went and raised a hundred grand. I didn't even know what I was doing out of pure passion. And I was traumatized. I was like, I was in a place in my life where like, I didn't have my dad. I was traumatized. I just, I, you know, I was off on my own and I went through this and I went and I did and I made my show anyway. Now I'm not, I'm not trying to say that to brag. I'm just saying you got to show up for you because the world sometimes is not going to help you. It's not going to, it's not going to be in your corner with you and you just got to fight. And sometimes you're going to feel like you're entirely alone. And I'm speaking to the people out there and you know what I'm particularly speaking to myself when I was younger, because this is what I needed to hear. Sometimes the world is not going to feel like it's in your corner. Keep swinging, keep moving forward. Don't make excuses because it's not going to matter. You're just going to keep showing up. And then one day it's going to turn around for you. And that's the thing. That's all I can say. The law of choice, in my opinion, is when you're in the ditch, when you're in the rope, when you're in the corners, whatever you want to call this analogy, you just keep going and trying to find a way. Yeah. Because you don't know where it's going to lead to and you don't know where it's going to work out. And you don't know how this is going to play out. And it might not play out exactly the way you think it's supposed to or whatever. But the thing is, is what's the alternative? You turtle in the corner, you turtle in the ditch and give up and just get dirt kicked on you for the rest of your life? I mean, just you, if you're going to get dirt kicked on you, if you're going to have to deal with shit, you might as well do it with a smile on your face, pushing forward, going for what you want. You know, and look, some of us come from uh, abusive families and we come from rough neighborhoods and we come from places that are not so great. If those are excuses for you for not showing up, then you that's your first problem. We can't even deal with your choices until you deal with that. The, The next thing is, is look. Would it be better if you came from a place of a supportive family with with a with a great neighborhood and a in great conditions? Of course. But look, you you didn't. And like, if you're going to go and do the life's not fair bullshit, you've lost. So you got to deal with that first. Life just isn't fair. Sorry. But you know what? Maybe it's not about competing with everybody else and starting at the same place that they're starting at. Maybe it's about starting where you're at and getting as far along your journey towards your purpose as you can. And the Mm -hmm. measurement is not a comparable. It's, it's all it is, is you enacting your purpose. And that's where choice comes in, I think. And maybe that's where you end up changing the world yeah. in some way, you know, because it's like, and because to say it's like that, that, you know, there are definitely those of us who've been presented 
with very difficult and unique challenges. I'm not, I I don't want to dismiss that even for a second. You know, I know that in my own life, I've been given certain advantages that not everyone has. And, and that there aren't things that we can do better as societies in doing and supporting certain, certain people and, and individuals and groups. But until that time comes, until we've achieved that, what we can still take control of is, is being the kinds of people that we want to be and exemplifying the kind of world that we want to build and the kind of life that we, that we want to have, you know, despite all of the challenges that we face, we can still do that. If we never face challenges, we wouldn't, we would never go out and try and change the world or fix anything. You know, the people who are given too much too easily make usually very little impact in the world. They yeah. might have material success and that might look good and you might go, well, their life's so comfortable. But, you know, the thing is, is like, you don't know. You don't know their story. You don't know their struggle. You don't know their thing. If you came from a place of a, a tough place, you, good, you know, in a certain way, good, because now you have something to stand up for. Now you have something to to build a foundation upon in which you know where there's, good and, and, and bad and, and how people, um, you'd like them to be treated. And then there's the other people that, you know, they, they, they're not just victims, but they're toxic. Like they literally take all their pain and all their hurt and all that stuff. And they try and go out and destroy other people. And that's a choice that some people make. And you know what, if you're going down that road, I mean, maybe you'll hear this, maybe you won't turn around Stop going out and, and, and stop hurting anybody else, knocking anybody else, start living your life, doing your thing because you're, you're headed down a very dangerous road for yourself. But you know what? Um, for the people who are out there and you're trying, if you're around those people that are toxic, cut them out of your life. You know, don't just don't allow them to be in your life. They'll learn when they're cut out of the world. Now, the same thing, look, Sometimes, you know, I've been cut. I've probably been cut from people's life. Okay. Sometimes we need to be cut because we're not being good enough. We're not living up to our ideals. We're being assholes. We're being arrogant. So if someone cuts you, don't bitch and moan about it. Look at how you are being right. And I think, I think like, I'm just kind of getting like a little passionate about this because choice is so important. And, And what I see is more people are choosing victimhood and weakness and they're not choosing from a place of, you know, value and a yeah. place of whatever. And so I look at, it, I go, well, if this is enough, if this conversation is enough to get you to like wake up right now and be like, I got to start choosing. Like I got it. Like I'm, I just listened to this podcast. Holy shit. I need to tell every friend I have, I need to start choosing my life. This is my call to action for you. Yeah. This is me saying like, look, life will just chew you up and spit you out otherwise. And it's just how it works. So you got to start moving forward, making a choice. You'll figure it out. You'll get out of whatever rut you're in if you do. But if you're going to be victim, you're going to be stuck there forever. And and don't complain if you're stuck there. Because no one wants to hear it except other <laughs> complainers. <laughs> <laughs> you know? There's a meetup group for that. Yeah. Um, so let's, uh, let's wrap this one up here. You know what's um, funny about this beer? The name, especially because of this last bit of the talk. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this, this beer is called, uh, we're having a beer. We, we have a beer to spurs on conversation. Um, but this one's called love buzz and it's by Strathcona beer company. It's a raspberry Berliner Berliner Weiss? Weiss. Berliner white Weiss. How do you say I think it? it's Weiss. Weiss. Yeah. Weiss. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's tart. What do you think? Yeah. It's like, I'm not usually a huge fan of tart beers, but this one has been, been really, really tasty. I've been enjoying it. Yeah, it's been it's been nice. I mean, for a nice it's a hot summer day for us today, so yeah, it's kind of nice, easy to drink. So why yeah. not try it out? Yeah, it's very pink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's it's funny. You know, you just try different beers, yeah. see what see what it's like. Um, okay, so you have any last thoughts? Yeah, I I mean, I feel like we've we've kind of been covering it around. We've you know, the main thing is you know, create create the vision of the person that you want to be. I think maybe that would be my, ho- my homework assignment 
is, you know, however you want to do that. Like writing's usually a good, easy way to do it, but create a vision of who is the person you really want to be mm -hmm. in the world? Who is that person? And figure that out. And then start making your decisions from that place. Mm -hmm. Start making choices from that place. Because it is that, it is that vision, it is that ideal that is going to help guide you into making more powerful decisions in your life that are going to steer you away from, from playing victim, which some other words is like playing small, playing not enough, playing all of this stuff. You know, this is, this is because like, I don't want to do some of what people say, victim shaming, I'm not victim shaming here. I just want to change some of the language around it, but it's like this because that victim language is very often, it is this thing of like, I'm not good enough. Mm. You know, that's what's underneath all of it. It's like, I'm not good enough is the secret cry underneath, underneath all of it. And it's like, well, start telling the story and creating the vision of someone who is good enough. Mm -hmm. What would they do? What would they choose to do in this moment? And now what would they choose to do in this moment? And in this one, and in the face of this challenge, and in the face of this challenge, what would that person do? Who is the person you want to be? And that will start to give you the clear direction as to where to go. And you don't know exactly where it's going to go, but it will always lead you to the next decision. And it will be just another opportunity to make another empowered decision for yourself and for what you want to build and for who you want to be. So that's it for me. Well, I like that. I, I, I'm just going to kind of second on what you're saying, you know, um, who do you want to be, you know, go from there. And I think that all the choices that you make, see them as no matter how they play out, if you're making them from who you want to be, they're helping you build who you're being. So like, y you know, things aren't built in a, in a bubble, right? Like they're, they're not like, like you, you got to leave your house. You got to like, you got to get out in the world. You got to go try some stuff. You got to do some things, you know? Um, sometimes it's just, you got to push yourself sometimes in, in an avenue or in a way where you actually care about something. Um, and you're going to make choices and you're going to make mistakes and you're going to fail and you're going to mess up. And, uh, you know, I ran that narrative for a little while, the I'm not good enough story, such a bullshit story. Cause like nobody is not good enough. Yeah. The thing is, is that you might've been in a moment where you did something and it wasn't enough. It wasn't good enough, but that was a moment in your life. Mm -hmm. Not meaning that you are not enough. It just means that you didn't you either didn't have the skill, the ability, the knowledge, the whatever. But the thing is, is this the beautiful thing about being a human being is you can learn and grow and become better. So the whole I'm not good enough story is like a, a it's a sorry excuse to stay where you are, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And I, I'm also I just want to quickly jump in on that is I also want to argue that that is not really who you are. It's not who you are. That's not who you are. Yeah. You are not that person. Deep down underneath it all, that is not who you really are. No, and you have, and you know, you can prove it by starting to make choices because you're going to start to see if you start choosing to be who you want to be and you start telling your life, telling the narrative of your life and living the narrative of your life that you want, you're going to start realizing that you're so friggin' powerful. There's so much to you. You just... Maybe you've never had anyone give you the nudge or the encouragement to go out and try and experience that, right? Maybe you actually thought you were who you, your parents told you or your teachers told you you were or who other kids or in school told you were whatever. Maybe you think that. Maybe you've been thinking that. And maybe you think because you grew up in some place that your life is like this. I want to challenge you, and this is my homework, I guess. I want to challenge you to go out and confront that narrative, challenge that narrative, change it, like see how you can. And you know what? You're going to find if you actually go and do this, you're going to find out that you've been, you haven't really been seeing what you're, what's possible. And then what ends up happening is you'll open one door and you'll create one opportunity and it will make you think a little bigger and a little bigger and a little bigger. And then pretty soon you'll look back and think, well, why was I ever living that way? 
But, you know, don't blame yourself if you didn't know this and don't make yourself wrong and don't do anything like, oh, like if only I knew this when I was younger or some junk like that. Look, you know when you know. Today starts today. Go do it now. You got choice, right? And the choices you made up to this point got you to where you are. But that's kind of cool. There's a lot of data there. Now you can do it however you want to do it, which is really cool and exciting. It's like a new lease on life. Thanks for listening to the show. If you got something out of this, if you feel it improved your life or your journey in any way, please take a moment to subscribe, leave a review, or share the episode. You can also support us on Patreon, where we have tons of great bonuses. You are the ones that make the show possible and help us to thrive. Thank you for joining us.